Good evening. We'd like to welcome everyone to the November 1st, 2021 Mesa City Council meeting. I'll note for the record that all of our council is present. Uh, council chambers are open to the public and we will take comments in person. Also, you can provide comments either over the telephone or via email. You can find multiple ways to participate on the first page of the council agenda. We will begin this meeting with an invocation offered by uh, my friend, Pastor Jose Luis Amaya from the Iglesia de Cristo Elim Betel Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. So please stand for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Thanks, Mayor. Thanks for all of you for the opportunity. To me, it's a blessing and also a privilege and your responsibility also to pray. Uh, I know it's only three minutes, but I'm gonna read just one verse of the Bible that always amaze me. It says, let every soul be subject to the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers there are be ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisted to the power, resisted the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. So it's a huge responsibility for you and for us to obey all you do. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for this opportunity and a privilege to come into your presence, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask in you for your grace, for your favor, your direction, and to all of the council members and all of us in this meeting tonight. We hope that all that knowledge that you give them and the understanding is always gonna show the wisdom in order to keep serving and helping us in this community. Thank you for your have done and for all the new things that you come up for them and to them. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Lord bless everyone. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, thank you again, Pastor, for the prayer. Uh, tonight, we have one item on our awards and recognitions agenda. We'd like to recognize Nancy Para Quinlan, who is a STEM teacher from Keno Junior High School, for receiving the 2022 Arizona Teacher of the Year Award from the Arizona Education Foundation. Each year, the foundation spots, spotlights the contributions of 10 outstanding public school teachers throughout Arizona, and only one is named the Arizona Teacher of the Year. Here to share more about the award and recognize Nancy Para Quinlan is our friend, Kino Principal Keiko Hasabe Dilbeck. Keiko, good to see you again. And congratulate, the last time I saw you, it was another, uh, you were receiving a, a big award at Keno, so. Just a lot of winning happening at Keno That's all right. the time, so <laughs> yes, thank you. So city leaders, thank you for inviting me here to introduce the, capital T, the 2022 Arizona Teacher of the Year, Nancy Parra Quinlan, or PQ as we call her. I know this is one of the proudest moments of my career as an administrator, and it, sh and it could be quite possibly the proudest of Keno's 65 year history. 65 years, okay. Keno is the type of school that nearly everyone in Mesa knows, uh, knows whether because of the pool or they or a family member went there, it is, ingrained, uh, it is an ingrained part of our city's landscape. Olympic athletes, CEOs, and illustrious politicians have matriculated through Keno, currently wandering the halls well, not right now, but tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. Uh, we will still have future Olympic athletes, CEOs, and politicians. Um, and because of the efforts of teachers um, at Kino and especially PQ, we also have future rocket scientists, engineers, and at least two or three astronauts, I think. Um, her efforts in building opportunities for people, uh, for people outside of the typical STEM role, students of color and females, is her, I call it her Miss America platform. Um, she has already given them amazing experiences as Kino is the only school in Mesa to take uh, students to Alabama for space camp. And despite COVID, we were able to provide a STEM summer experience for our students. 
Our future is bright because of stars like PQ. Did you see what I did there? Stars because your space. Okay, and I'm so pleased to watch her shine. Ladies and gentlemen, the teacher of the year for all of Arizona is Mesa's own Nancy Parra Quinlan from Keno Junior High School. Thank you. I just want to say it's been an honor and a privilege to be a Mesa resident and a teacher in Mesa, especially at Keno Junior High for the last 15 years and in Mesa Public Schools for the last 27. Uh, my students mean the world to me and I want to make sure that everything I do is for them. And people often say, well, you do a lot of different things. And I just tell them every moment I spend doing nothing means I'm doing nothing for my students. So thank you. Well, thank you so much. So we, we just, again, want to reiterate how proud we are of Kino and, and uh, Nancy for you winning this amazing award. Do you mind? We'll come down and take a photograph with you if you'll let us, uh, just Please. so we can brag a little bit more about you. All right, thank you. I thought maybe I was going to be like still separated from you. <laughs> you know. Thank you. Hey, will you join us too? I mean, but we, we got oh, so pretty oh, pictures awesome, for awesome. you. All right. All right. Are we uh, in balance here? I'm going to squeeze it over here. Oh, here pretty close. All right. Thanks. You can come. Take her. Okay. 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 Thank you. She's tired of standing next to me. Thank you. Thank you. The next on item on our agenda is the consent agenda. So we'll invite Mr. Kevin Christopher forward to read the consent agenda. Kevin. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. These are the items on the consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk will be considered as a group by the City Council and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion unless a Council Member or a citizen requests, in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered as a separate item. Item 2, approval of minutes of previous meetings is written. Item 3A, act on liquor license application for One Step Beyond, one day event, November 13th, 456 West McClellan Road. Item 3B, act on liquor license application for BRI Tap Room and Arcade, 213 West Main Street. Item 3C, act on liquor license application for Lone Spur Cafe, 1859 South Stapley Drive. Item 4A, act on bingo application for Apache Wells Bingo LLC, 2247 North 56th Street. Item 4B, act on bingo application for Encore at Eastmark Homeowners Association, 5620 South Encore. Item 5A, act on four-year renewal for the use of a cooperative contract for 3M radio frequency identification equipment and maintenance for the Library Services Department. Item 5B, act on three-year term contract with two years of renewal options for chiller maintenance and repair services for the Parks, Recreation, and Community Facilities Department. Item 5C, act on dollar limit increase and one-year renewal of the term contract for temperature-controlled drug locking cabinets for the Mesa Fire and Medical Department. Item 5D, act on three-year term contract with two years of renewal options for crack seal services, materials, and rental equipment for the Transportation Department. Item 5E, act on five-year renewal for the use of a cooperative contract for maintenance, repair, and operating supplies for citywide use. Item 5F, act on contract for South Canal Shared Use Path Project, Consolidated Canal to McKellips Road. This project is federally funded by a grant through the Active Transportation TA MAG program administered by ADOT. Item 5G, act to authorize the mayor to sign an amendment to the employment contract with the city auditor. Item 5H, act to authorize the mayor to sign an amendment to the employment contract with the city clerk. Item 5I, act to authorize the mayor to sign an amendment to the employment contract with the city attorney. 
Item 5J, act to authorize the mayor to sign an amendment to the employment contract with the city manager. Item 6A, act on resolution approving and authorizing the city manager to enter into a highway safety contract with the Arizona Governor's Office of Highway Safety to accept grant funds will be used by the police department's traffic division for overtime, employee-related expenses, materials, and supply for the selective traffic enforcement program in the city of Mesa. Item 6B, act on resolution approving and authorizing the city manager to enter into a highway safety contract with the Arizona Governor's Office of Highway Safety to accept grant funds will be used by the police department's traffic division for overtime, employee-related expenses, materials, and supplies for DUI impaired driving enforcement in the city of Mesa. Item 6C, act on resolution approving and authorizing the city manager to enter into a highway safety contract with the Arizona Governor's Office of Highway Safety to accept grant funds that will be used by the Police Department's Traffic Division for overtime, employee-related expenses, materials, and supplies for pedestrian and bicycle safety throughout the city of Mesa. Item 6D, act on resolution approving and authorizing the city manager to enter into a sub-recipient agreement with the Arizona Department of Homeland Security to accept grant funds for equipment and training to support and sustain the Police Department's Rapid Response Task Force. Item 6E, act on resolution approving and authorizing the city manager to enter into a sub-recipient agreement with the Arizona Department of Homeland Security to accept grant funds for equipment to support the police department's hazardous device team. Item 6F, act on resolution approving and authorizing the city manager to enter into a sub-recipient agreement with the Arizona Department of Homeland Security to accept grant funds for equipment and training to support and sustain the police department's terrorism liaison program. Item 6G, act on resolution approving and authorizing the city manager to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with the town of Queen Creek to accept funding in exchange for forensic laboratory services provided by the Police Department's Forensic Services Division. Item 7A, introduction of ordinance repealing and replacing Ordinance 5314 relating to compensation, vehicle and communication allowance, and city benefits for the mayor and city council effective January 2023, and acknowledging receipt of the report and recommendations of the Independent Commission on Compensation for Elected Officials. Item 7B, introduction of ordinance regarding ZON 20-00210, located east of Power Road on the south side of University Drive, rezone with a bonus intensity zone interlay, overlay and site plan review to allow for development of a commercial center. And item 8A, act on subdivision plant Los Nietos for property located south of the 202 Red Mountain Freeway and east of Gilbert Road. Mayor and council members, these are the items on the consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Christopher. Ms. Mickelson, do we have any requests to speak on an item on the consent agenda? No request, Mayor. All right, thank you. I see that Mr. Motion, uh, Mr. Luna has made a motion <laughs> to approve the consent agenda. Uh, seconded by Mr. Second. Oh, actually, it's seconded by Mr. Thompson. Uh, please cast your vote. Okay, thank you. The vote is unanimous uh, in, to approve the consent agenda. The next item on our agenda is item 9A. This is the introduction of the business license ordinance requiring a business license in the city of Mesa. This is the introduction of this ordinance and the hearing to consider the adoption will be at our no November the 15th council meeting. Uh, because this is an item that I think is important to the entire business community, we ask that this item be taken off the consent agenda just so we could uh, further publicize uh, that we're taking this action and that there will be a public hearing on uh, November the 15th in case the public or the business community would like to come and let us know how they feel about this. So. That being the case, could we have a, a short staff presentation just so the public knows what we're talking about? Yes, hello, hello Mayor and Council. Um, I'm Tim Meyer, uh, Licensing and Revenue Collections Administrator, and we're very happy to be bringing this ordinance to the Mayor and the Council for consideration. Um, some of the benefits that the business license will offer is uh, um, we'll be able to identify clustering of businesses. We'll also be able to identify better, be, better with the businesses um, when we have information that we want to communicate with them. A prime example would be when we went through COVID-19 and we had a, a lot of uh, federal dollars, county dollars, state dollars to distribute to businesses, we would have better information and could get out better information to those businesses um, to help them out. So um, it'll also help um, with any, if any of the other business owners or anyone considering coming into the city of Mesa, wanting to uh, know where to locate or would like to know a clustering of businesses. So if they'd like to know where their business perhaps would be like if they're a supply business, where would the businesses around them be most likely to utilize their business? We could help them out with that if they were asked, if we were asked to do that. Um, pr pretty much anything that the Economic Development Department or the City of uh, the Chamber of Commerce would be interested in, we can also um, provide that information as well too. So we'll be gathering a whole lot of new information that we don't currently have right now. So we're hopeful that this will help the business community, our first responders, and then and, 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 and anyone interested in economic, economic development. 
So we're, we're very proud and very uh, pleased to be bringing this forward, and I think it's going to be a great benefit to the City of Mesa. And Mayor and Council, maybe we should mention also that we're not the first to do this, that several other communities are currently collecting this information, um, and that this will become effective January... 1st of 2022. 2022. There is associated with it a $10 fee, but there will be no penalty for not collecting that in the first year. So really the first year's emphasis is just getting the word out to get that information collected uh, from our businesses in Mesa. And a reminder, this is, was a request from the Mesa business businesses that wanted to have this information, specifically our chamber, we've been working on it for some time. It really wasn't until the last couple of years that we had the technology available to allow us to set up the portal through which this information could be, could be collected. Correct. Well, thank you, Tim and Mr. Brady. Council, any questions for these gentlemen on this topic? Uh, Mr. Freeman? Yeah, I'll, I'll take a stab at it. So, Tim, why don't you mention the proposed fee for this? I mean, the application fee and then the renewal? Yes, the first year is going to be $10, and then it'll be $25 a year after that. So basically, the other communities, when you uh, put this all together, I mean, we're very low. I mean, we're $10 compared to other municipalities. They're starting at $25 all the way up to $60 just for the application fee, and the annual fees all vary, but we're very low on the annual fee. And I think one of the things we had was uh, difficulty in getting some of this federal monies out to all our businesses in the community, and we have a time constraint with that. So this will help simplify it and help us... Uh, navigate that process and getting monies out very much very much so yes i think this is going to be a, a great tool for us to be able to um, help businesses out should anything come in the future become that would help them out and i know some of the council members express concern about the data that's collecting but maybe you can explain some of the the minimal data that we are collecting for this and and uh, i think it's going to be control data. I mean, it's not going to be out there just in the open web. I know Council Member Thompson had a question on that earlier. Yes. So maybe you can explain that. Yes, Council Member Freeman, we're going to be collecting data um, that basically would be useful to other businesses. So what type of business do you do? How many employees do you have? Um, where's your location? Um, contact information. So should we need to get a hold of a, of a business owner, we'll be able to do that. Um, the data will be available publicly, but we're going to take and protect any of the data that would be um, would be would, would be tied to a specific person for um, their own personal for their own personal use. So, do we have a, a website or link that allows businesses to kind of navigate and, uh, on a fact sheet or anything? We'll be putting something together about that. It'll be going through our Acela system, so the data will be will stored will be stored in there, and then we can produce reports and and identify information as needed through that. And I know that there was a language concern. You know, the different languages: English, Spanish, and perhaps some uh, Asian languages. Council Member Heredia, yeah. Mandarin. Yeah. Yeah, at this point in time, it's going to be English and, and, and Spanish, and we can consider other ones. But the more languages we put into it, just a whole lot more of extra work on staff and maintenance to do that every time we make changes and so forth to that. So um, we can do whatever we're directed to do, but right now we're planning on just English and Spanish. Thank you. That's the only questions I have. Thank you. Thank you. Council, other questions or comments on this item? Um, yes, thank you, Mayor. Can we have an example? of how it would appear online as far as the access of information available to the public? Uh, is it public information? Can uh, we have an example of that, like saying this is on a web interface, right? Right. And it would be like business name? And anyway, kind of with a summary of information that's publicly available, I'd be interested. We'll be posting a, an application that'll show everybody what we're, gonna, what we're gonna be collecting. It's very basic information. We're trying to keep it to one page. So um, again, it's not gonna be a lengthy process. Hopefully it's gonna be a very easy process. Um, so we'll have some information online with that. And then we'll, pr we'll pr try to provide any kind of information, like information bubbles and so forth. So people click on something and they wanna know what it is. It'll explain what we're looking for. And then of course our staff will be available. So everything's gonna be online. So we'll be able to collect everything online. So hopefully there'll be, uh, it'll be a very simple process. And Mayor and Council, um, our intent is to try to mimic as many of the other applications that other cities collect today so that there's a consistency because right now, Tim gets calls from businesses wanting to know where to fill out the application for the city of Mesa 
business license, which you don't have, because they've already had to do that for other cities. Correct. Is that correct? Yes. So, so if we can, we're going to try as much as we can to make our application very be very consistent in the type of information and how it's collected, so that when they do come to our site, it will, if they've already most likely have filled out in another community, it'll look familiar here. Yes, we've pulled the applications from other cities and we're trying to mimic that as much as possible. I looked over the application and it seems fairly basic and uh, I personally don't have any concerns about that. My concern more is uh, what the public information will be after that information is collected, how that information is shared or appears or the limitation of information and that's the example or maybe the fields that will be shared yep. and that would be what I'm interested in going forward. Okay. Thank you. So the, the application, the, the, the data that we're seeking has already been identified and uh, Vice Mayor's ahead of me. I haven't seen that document yet, but you've reviewed it and it's the app. Uh, the application, it's, the, we had a draft. We did have an application that went out to yeah, council. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll certainly look at that before we have our, our hearing. But my understanding is we're not asking for any financial information. It's, no. it's really just what type of business you have, what is the, the basic contact information, uh, items that are really probably already in the right. public domain that can easily be Googled on There's any of these businesses. Nothing new that isn't already found on the internet. Okay, thank you. The vice mayor is showing this to me and I, I will uh, <laughs> see if I have any issues with it long before we, we vote on this in a couple of weeks. But uh, great. I think that's the spirit of it is, is really, this is again, to reiterate what Mr. Brady said, we're doing this at the business community's request because they would like to, to have more opportunities to, to interact with each other and, and to, to um, uh, contact each other. Right, and Mayor and Council, if you recall, after we had this discussion about the business license, during the budget process, you then asked us to add a position in economic development who would be part of their role would be utilizing this kind of information to also educate, inform our businesses about opportunities that might assist them, programs the city might have that could benefit them. So. Um, it will be a, it is a business registry, that's the intent, right, to provide information. But we talked about, and the council authorized, actually having a person on the city staff that would also be able to use this as an opportunity to share information to businesses that we think may be helpful to them, be beneficial to them, whether it's maybe small business assistance programs or small business um, webinars, and we have a lot of that going on. So this is just another way to get out there. We already have businesses, I think we have over 500 or more businesses, maybe it's more than that, but already coming to us and giving us this information so that they can get that kind of information back from the city. So we kind of already have established that program just because of our small business outreach program, where businesses are already coming to us and saying, here's all my information, please let me know when this program or event comes up because I want to participate. So that's how we see it being used, is that way of communicating with our businesses. Mr. Freeman. Tim, how many businesses do we have in the city of Mesa that roughly right now? I mean, don't, didn't we kind of... Well, that was economic development used another we, database. But we had... twelve to 14,000, was not our guess? Right. We have really no, no data on service businesses or home-based businesses, and this will allow us to collect that data as well. Yeah, I think the answer is we really don't we know, don't but know. our guess was right. twelve to 14,000, but that was probably right. low. And I just wanted to point out, there are some exemptions here as you, you do not have to have a business license. So I would encourage the public to, you know, get on the web and, and figure this out. And uh, what, what website do we have? Where can they go? We'll uh, set something up on our, on our City of Mesa website. So if you want to access data on the business license, we're going to have a, just a one click, take you right to a web page and you can check out the data that's posted out there. So we'll have the application and other data out there as well as well as the draft ordinance. Yeah, remember there won't be any data on Mason businesses. We've right. got a whole year just to Collect. get mm -hmm. the information. So it'll be a while before we're actually actively creating portals and you know clicks to get to how many biz how many flower shops are in Mesa. That won't happen for a while because we right. need a year to collect the information. Correct. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Well, uh, thanks to the Vice Mayor. I, I have reviewed the document now. <laughs> and uh, it, again, it's, it's, it's basic information, address, telephone number, type of business type of thing. But I, I think it would be good for our, our hearing in a couple of weeks to, to maybe have a slide so we could show that on Channel 11. And sure. then also at our meeting last Thursday, you did a great job of explaining what businesses are exempt. 
uh, sales and, and certain other categories of businesses that I, I think would they'd be good for the, for the public to know that it, it, there are some broad exceptions sure. to this. So we'll look forward to that. Uh, well, well, let's see how the vote goes. We, we have a, th thank you, Council. Any other questions from Tim or Mr. Brady? Okay, we have a motion from Mr. Freeman, seconded by Ms. Spilsbury to, uh, to set November the 15th as the, uh, the hearing on this proposed ordinance. Uh, please cast your vote. Uh, we have six in, in favor with Mr. Thompson voting no. So we'll convene that hearing on November the 15th. Uh, next item on our agenda is item 10A. This is the public hearing prior to the release of the petition for annexation case 21728 for approximately 71.3 acres of land located north of Pecos Road and west of Signal Butte Road. I declare the public hearing open. Ms. Mickelson, do you have any requests to speak from the public on this item? No request, Mayor. All right, thank you. Do any council members want to address this item? <clears throat> hearing none, I declare the public hearing closed. There's no action on this item at this meeting. This annexation will come back to the council at a future council meeting for action. Uh, the next item on our agenda for this meeting is item 11, items from, items from citizens present. Ms. Mickelson, do we have any requests to speak? We have one item. Mayor uh, Mark Lowe submitted some comments. Um, he states, um, because Mayor Giles' signature alone appeared on the unconstitutional and unlawful proclamation to lock down and mass the citizens of Mesa, Arizona, my COVID-19 viral cycle threshold question is directed squarely at Mr. Giles, unless one or more would you like to join him. The record will reflect that I have been asking the VCT question for many months and never receives a substantive answer. I asked for specific data and have received a written response from Mayor's Chief of Staff, Melissa Rendazzo. Uh, she addresses Mr. Lowe throughout the pandemic. The City of Mesa have strived to balance the need to protect the health and safety of our residents with the needs of businesses. With CARES Act funding, we stood up an emergency rental and utility assistance program, mortgage assistance program, small business re-emergence program, technical assistance program, and food distribution programs for seniors and others in need. We are proud of our response and how our neighboring cities, region, and health agencies work together during an unprecedented health and public health crisis. Uh, Mr. Lowe continues stating, although one may speculate as to why Mr. Giles could, should, or would be reluctant in answering my question on point, not answering is unacceptable and cannot be allowed to stand because so very many lives and livelihoods were severely and in many cases permanently damaged. It is important to know what happened in order to prevent what happened from happening in the future. The citizens are the employers for all elected and unelected public servants. This comment must be strictly adhered to if democracy is a constitutional republic, in a constitutional republic is to continue as written in the United States Constitution. The failure of a public servant to answer the questions asked by his master is wrong. For that servant to deflect his responsibility is untenable and unacceptable. I respectfully request the COVID-19 viral cycle threshold scientific data you used to mask. End of comments. All right, thank you very much. Uh, that concludes the items on our, our, that are on our agenda for this meeting. Is there a motion to adjourn? Thank you, Mr. Luna, seconded by Mr. Thompson. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, we are adjourned. <laughs>